On July 26th, the United States Library of Congress made a decision that really pissed off the iPhone and Droid manufacturers. They essentially said that it was legal for smartphone owners to hack their own smartphone so that they can install whatever software that they want on it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to root a Motorola Droid. Why a Droid? Well, because it's the only phone I own. You'll get over it. So what's the significance of rooting a phone? Well, it lets you have complete control over your phone and it lets you install programs that your phone company and manufacturer generally won't allow. So with the rooted droid, you can install your own themes, fonts, you can overclock it, and you can remove all the useless applications that phone companies put on there. Now before continuing, please note that this will void your phone's warranty. This worked for me, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. So please continue at your own risk. That said, I'm going to be using a first generation droid running Froyo 2.2, build number FRG22D. But this tutorial will work with anything prior to that as well. To find out what version you're running, turn on the droid, click the menu button, and go to settings, about phone, and look at the Android version and the build number. Alright, you're going to need two files in order to complete this project. The first one is the Android SDK, which is the Android Developer Kit. The next thing that you need is the Droid to Root file, which contains BusyBox, our root image. Once you have these files downloaded to your desktop, extract both of them to your C drive. I'm using WinRAR to extract them, but you can use 7-Zip or whatever archiving program you want. The file paths should end up being c colon slash droid to root and c colon slash android dash sdk dash windows. Now you want to pull out your droid and enable USB debugging by clicking on the menu button going to settings, applications, development and enable USB debugging. Then plug it into your PC and once your droid has been detected by the computer open up an elevated command prompt by if you're using Windows 7 clicking on start typing in CMD and hitting control shift enter on the keyboard simultaneously. If you're using Vista just run it as an administrator and if you're using Windows XP don't worry about it. You can find all these commands in the video description, but the first thing that you want to do is navigate to your Android SDK directory by using the cd dot dot command to move up a folder and then cd plus the folder's name to open up that folder. Now open up the tools folder and we want to use the ADB program to list the devices and make sure that our droid is detected. Then push the droid to root bin file onto the phone's data local temp directory. Now connect to the phone itself and navigate to that same data local temp directory. Convert the bin file to an executable and execute it. Now wait a couple of minutes until you get your C colon prompt back. When it's through, type in ADB devices and ADB shell again. Then mount your system directory with read write access and then type exit. Now push the super user app, the SU binary, and the BusyBox app onto your phone's system storage. Reopen the shell and make the SU binary an executable. Do the same thing for BusyBox. Now disable the recovery from boot to prevent the phone from rejecting the root. Lastly, remove the rage files and exit the shell. That's it. Quick. Yeah, I know. Sorry to disappoint. So how do you know if it worked? How do you know if your phone is now rooted? Well, after rebooting your phone, you can try to install one of these root-only applications from the app market. And if they install and they work, then you've done it. I've posted some cool tutorials in the video description showing what all you can do with a rooted phone. So get to it and have fun hacking. Be sure to check out Tinkernut on Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.